Hey, Tom. I can't believe that we we've, we've rarely met yet. We so have. I remember back in the day, early Sonic Sonic State. I used to uh, pillage your blog for n interesting news items, so I thank you for that. Thank you. <laughs> and now you're making hardware. Now, well, I've been making hardware for 12 years now, I think. I think back in 2012, I did the Turing machine, which was a of course, yeah, a kind of open source uh, sort of random sequencer. I kind of put it out in the world and said maybe somebody would like to make this and a guy called Steve appeared on the on the forum and said I'll make a kit for these and what he set up is now Funk which is obviously a kind of record label for hardware. Well it was really popular the Turing really machine isn't it yeah. for generative modular patches yeah. and all sorts. And that, yeah that really took off and then since then I've been designing uh, modules, individual modules and then the last year or so, I've been designing the workshop system, which is a all-in-one kind of analog synthesizer. This is where I pan majestically yeah. towards it. Yeah. All-in-one analog synthesizer with a computer attached to it. So this on the side is a is a computer, and down here, are little program cards. You put in one of these program cards, and this becomes lots of different things. So at the moment, it's a Turing machine sequencer. Um, but it can also be a reverb, it can be a MIDI interface, it can be lots of different things. So whatever oh, you, whatever you want to create, you can, so people who can write code can write quite simple code for using things like Arduino code. So it's a platform. It uh, so it's like so a platform, yeah. And is it using one of the kind of uh, the, 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 the already existing uh, like DSP platforms? I'm trying to think like Bella. No, or it's not. It's, it's not. It's, it's, thing. it's a, a thing called a, it's like a Raspberry Pi Pico. Right. Okay. So it's an RP2040, very simple, like 50, 50p chip that you can program in lots of different languages. But I think for most people who get this, they're not going to go anywhere near writing code for it. They'll just be able to buy these cards or download the code, and it can do things with that. Similar thing I saw, there was the Solar Alta Music thing, where you get the little cards you can Yeah, I in, think so. But they I were mean, just effects algorithms. It's like a Game Boy. Yeah, nice. You know, it's exactly that. And the idea, it can be anything. So it could be, it could be effects, it could be a sequencer, it could be like a wavetable oscillator. Um, those are all things that people in the development community already and you've got. It. And you've got control inputs and outputs and stuff to sort of access. Yeah, you've got CVs in, audio in and out, CVs in, uh, CV out, and then pulse in and out. But that's only this end here. The rest of it is um, an analog synth, so the digital kind of stops at this line. So you've got two oscillators, and these are like sort of 70s style, you know, transistor and op amp oscillators. You then got two filters, and these are the humback filter, which was came out a few years ago from God's Box, uh, again sold through um, Funk. It's a really nice kind of clean two-pole oscillator, a bit like a sort of SEM oscillator. So two of them, two envelopes, and these are like sort of maths or surge style envelopes, kind of up-down envelopes that can be LFOs, like function they can loop, type thing, exactly yeah. that. Mixer at the end. And then one of the things I wanted to do was have this connect with things you already have. So there's a stereo input there that boosts up to modular level. So if you've got like a Volker or you've got a laptop or your phone, you plug that in there and then you might process that through the rest of it. Right, okay. You've got a ring mod here, which is what you can hear in the background. So again, you can take some drums in there, put them through the ring mod, you've immediately got something quite interesting going on. You've got here a contact mic input. Uh, you, can see the, you can see the LEDs flashing there. There's a contact mic behind the panel. So that's like my microphony or musical instruments ears, which came from that. That's also a, a sort of amplifier. So that's like the mini your, your greatest hits, kind exactly. of. Exactly. Yeah. So you can use that for distorting things. Then down here, you've got a the stomp box interface. So this is a guitar pedal interface. You've got a kind of blend and a feedback control. Oh, like an insert. This point, goes out right. to a guitar pedal. And under here, you've actually got the power output, nine volt power output for a guitar pedal. Look at that. So you can run your pedal directly. The man who thinks of everything. It. So it's kind of the idea of connecting uh, with the stuff you already have. So it's all in one, but most people have stuff at home. They have 
pedals or they have things like a Volca. But it looks like, I mean, you could do an awful lot of things, like even just yeah. putting an effects chain into your, yeah. uh, your stomp box chain into your modular by having this. Yeah. And this is, I mean, it's not an insignificant size and you've, got, you've gone for really nice old school controls. Which yeah, is, it was a big, I mean, a big part of it was making it kind of fundamentally as cheap as possible. How do you make it affordable without making it sort of nasty? So, you know, every time you put stylish. every time you put a big knob like this on, it costs more than a little knob. But it's that balance of where do you where do you put the money and how do you build an interface that's going to be in kind of enjoyable and fun. Well, also people don't realise, but having larger knobs with a wider uh, ro rotational yeah. kind of circumference makes it easier to be. Yeah find a control I mean it's, it's and the history of the thing was back in April I ran a retreat with a bunch of musicians came down to plays in Cornwall and they did like graphic scores and field recording and that kind of thing and they all use these as part of that so right. that's why it's called a workshop system the idea is it's for somebody either somebody starting out or somebody wanting to work in a more kind of restrained constrained way but allowing them to do, you're as much likely to do processing external audio as you are using it for kind of sequencing and making right. sound yourself. Gotcha. That was the idea. So, I mean, is it in the world? Can you buy it now? Or? So, in about probably the next month or two, hopefully before Christmas, they'll be for sale at Thonk as a DIY kit. So you right. buy it, all of the kind of circuit boards are populated with all the tiny things, but you have to stick on the 58 sockets and the pots and the switches and it's a kind of maybe two hour build and if you're if you've done soldering before if you're kind of confident with making even quite small kits it's probably quite a straightforward build and that'll be 400 pounds that kit that comes with everything comes with the case comes with everything you need but i mean essentially you're sort of almost like it's like a two oscillator two filter system with also the additional computer yeah. you know so there's quite a lot of stuff in there right yeah excellent and so it runs off you can run it off batteries and like i did today you can come somewhere like this carrying your modular with you on a bike oh wow well that's that's even better so perfect thank you so much tom cool thank you